So in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about VRF communications. Now, I had a question posed to me by one of my students today, asking me if we have four routers and the two in the middle are connected via VRF A and VRF B. How can we allow the communication from R1 to R4? As you can see here, that's our requirement. We have to provide communication between R1 and R4. Now the question here is, is what is VRF A and what is VRF B and why does this cause issues with ERGRP in general? Well, that's what we're going to be using in this particular example. Now I have some information listed out here already. So R1 and R2 have a subnet 121220, R2 to R3 23232330 and R3 to R4 is 34, 34, 34, 0. Now all these things have been put into ERGRP as well as the loopbacks respectively. So what we're going to look at is the configuration of R1, R2, R3, and R4 to get a good understanding of how they are configured currently and what we can do to allow communication from the loopback and physical interface of R1 to the loopback and physical interface of R3 going across these VRFs. So for now this is pretty simple. Four devices will come out of here. Let's clear the screen and move into our session manager. Now I'm going to open up all four of these devices here. This is R1 through R4. We can connect these into a new tab group. And I'm going to have send commands to the entire group, so I'll be able to connect to these routers here. One, two, three, and four. From here, let's just hit enable at the bottom just to make everything enabled. We can do a show CDP neighbors from one. You'll see we're connected R2, zero, zero on the local interface on R1, remote on one slash zero. I'm sorry, 0 slash 1. Same thing over here. R2 is connected on the local Ethernet 00 to router 3. Router 3 is on 00. R1, local E0 slash 1, 0, 0. You kind of get the point. So thinking back to our configuration, let's do a show run section VRF and see that we have IP VRF A and we have IPVRF for forwarding for A, and of course an address family for ERGRP allowing VRF A on Autonomous System 1. So you'll see here we do have this network for ERGRP and we have VRF A. So if you remember back, we have a VRF configured on Ethernet 0 slash 0 connected to R3. Show run interface E00. You're going to see here we have our IP VRF forwarding A. Over on 3, we can do the same thing. IP VRF forwarding B. Show run section VRF lets us know that yes, it is VRF B. We have the forwarding on the interface and it's included in ERGRP. Router 1 and Router 4 don't really have anything else going on, except they are assigned the IP address I've showed you previously. Looking at R1, let's do a show IP route, and you'll notice that I do have connectivity to Router 2. So if I ping the loopback interface on Router 2, it does respond. Show IP interface brief exclude unassigned tells us that yes, that is our loopback. Now keep in mind, we only have IP VRF forwarding A configured on a single interface, as you see here, which is the connection between router 2 and router 3. One of the things we can do is show IP route VRF, and then you're going to notice 2 has A, 3 has B. So if we do VRF A, you'll see here that we actually do have the routing in VRF A. Rechecking out the router command, you'll notice that we have our default routing table. Uh, networks 2.2.2.2, which is our loopback, and network 12.12.12.2, .12 .12 .2, 
which is the connection to router 1. That's why over here on router 1, we have the ERGRP route, because that is in our default routing table. You'll also notice here we have created a VRFA address family under ERGRP with the connection between router 2 and router 3. So once again, uh, we look at the show IP route for VRFA. We don't have anything yet. What we can do, show IP ERGRP VRFA neighbors, you'll see here that I do have a neighbor on this interface, 23.23.23.2, which is the IP address on router 3, right here. So even though router 3 has VRFB configured, it doesn't matter because it's a locally significant configuration. B on 3, A on 2, we're good to go. Now in relating to R1 and R4 being able to communicate, we still need to look at these devices here because a VRF on a single interface, well that's all it allows, that single interface to be connected to that VRF. What we need to do is we need to look at the interfaces we want to include in that VRF. In this case, router 1 needs to be in the VRF to allow communication through router 2. Looking at eth0 slash 1, we'll see that we do not have a VRF here, but we have the IP address. So what we can do is the same thing for 0, 0. Once we go into the configuration of the interface, we can copy this IP VRF forwarding A. That didn't kind of work. Let's try that again. Uh, IP VRF forwarding A, but you're going to notice that IPv4 disabled due to enabling VRF A. So let's go back in again. Show run interface uh, E0 slash 1, and you're going to notice that there is nothing here now. No IP address. One of the reasons I made sure to have this IP address command at the top was because this happens. If we come in here and do IP address 12.12.12.2.255.255.255.252, this gets us our point to point link back. So let us verify, do show run interface E0 slash 1, and now we have the VRF. The other problem we have, however, is ERGRP. So we'll look at the ERGRP configuration, and remember, this is configured in the default routing table, not in the VRF. So what we have to do is go into ERGRP. Uh, we need to look at the address family for IPv4. It's a unicast connection for VRFA, Autonomous System 1, and add these networks. 12.12.12.2.0000. And, and now you're going to see we have a new adjacency. 12.12.12.1 is now up and running. One of the things we can do just to verify, show run interface loopback 23. Well, this is not in a VRF, so it's not going to work either. Let's just verify. Show IP ERGRP VRF A interfaces. So now you'll see we have Ethernet 00 and Ethernet 01 in ERGRP for VRF A. Looking back at one, let's just make sure, show IP route. Okay, you'll notice we have the 23 network, so we can actually ping router 3 now, hopefully. And there you go, we are able to ping 23.23.23.2. So we have one more thing to do. Let's come in here and look at Ethernet 00, is IP VRF forwarding B, and show run interface E0 slash 1 does not have IP VRF. So IP VRF forwarding B, IP address 34.34.34.1, 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255
Let's do show run section router again. We have this particular address in the VRF and the other two in the default routing table. So let's come in here to ERGRP, address family IPv4, unicast for VRF B, Thomas system 1. We'll add both these networks in. 34.34.34.1 and all right we have our dual neighbor change we have our neighbor three to four is up now come back to one show IP route and now you're gonna notice I have the network for 34.34.34.0 from here I can ping 34.34.34.2 and it responds. Coming back over to router 4, you'll notice that the 34.34.34.2 is actually included here. We also have the 4.4.4.4 which is showing up right here. So now we have the ability to ping both the physical interface on router 4, Ethernet 0 slash 0, and loopback 34 on router 4 and it worked so that's just one of the things you have to realize when dealing with VRFs is that you need to know which VRFs it might exist on which router and that they are locally significant when you want to have two routers to be able to communicate with one another and let's just say within the same VRF you need to make sure the VRF is configured on all interfaces that you need that communication. So once again, let's do a show run on router 2. You'll see here that I have IP VRF A. Uh, interface E00 is in A now, and 0 slash 1 is also in A now. Keep in mind that if you want the loopback interfaces to be included, you need to add the IP VRF forwarding A to those as well. Under ERGRP, you're going to notice that we still have the old networks here under the default routing table. But we just came in here and added them to the VRF. And now we have ERGRP doing all of our route sharing. Just remember to come back through here and remove the unused or unneeded default routing table entries. And that's pretty much it. If you have uh, VRFs on routers, add an extra VRF on router 2 and router 3 in this instance, and you are good to go. So I hope this has been informative and uh, will start us on a VRF track. Uh, if you look at our MPLS video, we do a lot on uh, VRFs with route targets uh, for route imports and exports, as well as configuring uh, Layer 3 VPNs. Kind of get a good understanding of how some of the MPLS or uh, ELAN configurations work in your ISPs. So yeah, thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.